Amen. Mission ready. We live in the world that's very, very strange because a lot of things change. I remember when I came to America in 1975, the world, or at least America at that time, very, very different compared to today. At the time when, uh, when I came to America, especially Houston, especially in 1975, a young man, 18 years old, I can go out the street and do the finger like this, and I can go just about anywhere in Texas, and I'm, I'm hijacked all the way to California, and I had no problem. But now, it seems like you cannot do that. And two days after I get to Houston, I went to work. And at that time, people honor, you know, the promise. When we handshake, that like, yeah, it's done. We don't have to fill out any paperwork or whatever. We trust each other on our word. But now, it seems like if you, time is changing. However, when you go back to God's words, the command from him, we have to be ready. The mission has to be ready, regardless of the change around in us. The community we live in is also changed, but the mission of Christ is always the same. We have fortunate in the location they're very diverse. And believe it or not, every day when I come to work at the church, a lot of people stop by the church and they have some struggle, especially during the COVID-19. A lot of broken family out there and create some heavy burden on the communities. One of the police officers stopped by the church and also ask, what can the church do to help? And of course, we open the church. We have a lot of community support. We support the fire department next door for some event. We also answer the phone when the people need help, especially when they call the police for help. And uh, our church, in the location, a lot of Vietnamese people, and believe it or not, Whenever there is a big holidays, a lot of young people aged from 16 to 21, 22 commit suicide. And uh, that reason why the police or the fire department asked the church for help. Mission ready, we go back to the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44 to 51. Try to understand if it happened years ago, a thousand years ago, and it would happen again for today's world, and the church, and each one of us, we have to respond. In some of you, uh, you know, raised in the back, and uh, today we have a lot of people on vacation, but we have quite a few young people serve military uh, in uh, Air, uh, Armed Force, but they are absent today. In military, when the term mission ready it means the fighting force understand its missions, logistically prepare, they train, they equip, and they motivate to accomplish the mission assigned to them. And if we go back 2,000 years ago, while Jesus' first disciple may not have thought of themselves as a fighting force, but Jesus Christ knew the world. The battle is not the military or physical battle, but rather than the spiritual one. Shortly before his ascension, Jesus explained uh, to his faithful disciples about their missions, and he charged them to be mission ready. And when we read the passage in the book of Luke, it's the same message he sent to the church, especially the church, West Houston Church, the mission had to be ready, to be ready for the mission. The church today, you would find out, is sometimes struggle or don't understand Jesus Christ's last word. But the church had to ask itself, 
If it is a mission ready, is it just ready to carry out the mission for today's world, even though the world is changing? Some of you, uh, we, uh, our church will have roughly about 12 folks graduate from uh, professional school um, and high school. And today I just find out, uh, you Rachel? Rachel, HBU, something like Helen. She graduated from uh, HBU, Helen from HBU. And uh, Brittany, sit in the back, audio controller also graduated from HBU. So all the HBU need to connect together. So what exactly Jesus Christ tried to tell the people or the church today, mission ready. He's talking about the mission of the church is Christ-centered mission. The mission of the church is a global focused mission. And the mission of the church is spiritual empowered mission. So I will go point by point. The mission of the church is a Christ-centered mission from verse 44 to 48. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophet, and Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they, can, they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witness of this thing. So Jesus Christ reminds his disciple, reminds his disciple while he was still with them in his earthly ministry, he had explained to them that on the scripture, remember back in the time of Jesus Christ, only Old Testament, basically he said that on the scripture, the Old Testament, talk about him. Uh, uh, predict or uh, prophesy about him, spoke about him. The reason why he said this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the psalm. And then he began to explain to his disciples about ongoing mission and not get sidetracked. You are witness of this thing. Because we live in the world, sometimes the influence from outside get us off track of what Jesus Christ telling us to do, the mission of the church. He tell the, his disciple tell us today very, very simple message. You are witness of this thing. Tell the people what you experience about Christ. When you pray, accept Jesus Christ, your Lord, your Savior, you have salvation. Share that message. Before you know Christ, what are you look like or who are you? After you accept Christ as your Lord Savior, He changing you what exactly is going on in your life. And that's the simple message. And you have to experience how Christ works in you so you can share that message. Because that message is from you. You experience I have my own experience. And of course, I put in some you know, Bible verse to build the case. But I have my own story about how Christ changed me. Back in the time in 1975, when I escaped from the boat, get out of the open ocean. And of course, during the time when I was young in high school, a lot of people come and tell me about Jesus Christ. But again, as a young people, hard-head young people, and they're very proud individuals, so I say, hey, I need to fight on the belief system for my own. I grew up in 14th generation Buddhism. So it cannot just be one movement or somebody share me the message and I change the whole belief system. It, it won't happen. But during the time when I get out of Vietnam on the boat, and after seven or eight days in the open water, when you had no food, you had no water, and suddenly it looked like you experienced something you cannot describe. 
basically you experience like you dead. <laughs> it looks like you know you, you you lay on the boat, but you float on the boat, and at that moment in time, suddenly somebody share with me Psalm 23. Even though I walk in the shadow of death, I'm not afraid. I'm not worried because your staff. At that time, that's what I remember protected me. And suddenly I remember somebody told me, need to turn back to God and pray to him. So right then and there, I pray to God, Christ, it's just the name, I don't know. And I get rescued from the open water. And believe it or not, 20 something odd years later, it turned out to be I'm in the same uh, Michelle, father, Navy ship picked me up. But I didn't know until like 20 years later, we sit in the same church and I become a pastor and we had a conversation and her father asked me, what boat or what Navy ship picked you up? I say that, what five, whatever the boat. I said, I'm the one. So I'm the one on that boat, on the Navy ship pick you up. But wait until like 20 years later, we find out about that, even though we see each other every Sunday. It's kind of amazing. And when I get to uh, Philippines and then to Warm, and I try to find the church in the camp, and believe it or not, I met Dr. Thomas Sturman, Musiton Tukban. So he go through the whole process about share the gospel and at that time, I'm truly kneel down and pray, accept Christ. And it changed the whole thing, changed the whole thing. So that reason why each one of you has to have the story, your own experience, and you'll be able to share how you experience Jesus Christ. How do you meet him? And so, so he, he talked about proclaim him. Uh, about how he suffered, he died and rose from a grave, and the forgiveness and through repentance, we can only find through him. And we also understand that the mission of the church is global focused mission. We talk is easy, but sometimes they're very difficult to do. In verse 47, talking about we will preach in his name to all nations, begin at Jerusalem. So sometimes you have to sit back, begin at Jerusalem. Where is your Jerusalem? And very, very touched when you're talking about uh, you know, the hymn we sing. Jerusalem, it can be begin at your family. Because each one of you is responsible for three generations. Your generation, your children's generation, and your children, children generation. And if we truly responsible for three generations, it's mean you can see generation, thousand generation beyond your own living. Very, very important to do that. When you study the book of Joshua or the book of church, you would find out the Israelite, when they get into the promised land, they can only survive three generations. When they get to four generations, these four generations run away from God. And they had to pay, and then after that could be a few more generations, and they had to pay the price of war, of hardship. And then God raised, an, and then they begin to complain, and they, they pray to God. And the remnant, when they pray to God, God rise up another church to free them liberate them. And they go back and they say, God, I will follow you. And then after three generations, the same cycle happened again. But each one of you, if you understand Christ's message, when you're responsible for three generations, it means you and your children and your grandchildren are the remnant. And the remnant will change the nation. Some people come to me and say, well, in 1975, it's been, what, about 45 years, 50 years ago? Suddenly, it changed. 
is not like the, uh, the American when we come. But now everything has changed. Corruption happened, and a lot of bad thing or sinful thing it happened in the nation. But remember, 45 years, it means one and a half generation. It's just one and a half generation. So it means if we go back to the scripture, America had to suffer for another one and a half generation. Because it takes three generations to change. So if we understand that, it means the change starts from us. Start from my generation, I have to make sure my children's generation is straight with God, with each other, and her children's generation probably will change the community and the world. And that's how I read the scripture. If you had the chance to go back and read Old Testament and how things unfold, uh, and exactly like today's world. And then now we talk, preach on nations, start from Jerusalem and then Judea. And then they talk about Samaria and then on over the world. So we start from Houston, Texas, from your family or the community around us. And uh, uh, you know when you donate uh, to the church, you can pick five charity organizations. Okay, of course, you know, I own English, we do the church but you also pick five charity to support the community. And we always screen these five charity very, very closely to make sure they have the same mission mind and they have the same purpose, uh, just like our church. And you can pick and choose. So the church can give to that charity on behalf of your name. Okay? So at the end of the year, you get the whatever the receipt from the charity organization. You can recommend other organizations so we can take care of our community around this church. So my definition, Jerusalem is mean Houston, Judea is state of Texas. We need to pray for state of Texas. Um, Samaria would be North America, North America, South America, it can be include uh, other states and Canada and South America and on over the world. So the question, some people come to me, how do we do it? Because if you count the nation, there's 212 nations in the world and around 13 territories. So how the church like us can support 212 countries? And of course, we have organization, we call it Evangelism explosion, they have mission on 212 nations, and we donate a little bit to them to take care of 212 nations. And of course, we are belong uh, to Baptist and uh, IMB, International Mission Board. They support about missionary for 70 countries. So we give a little bit bigger chunk to them to support the missionary to do the work of God in over 70 countries. And some people ask me, but we Vietnamese, how do we support the Vietnamese? Yeah, we give part of some of the money to Vietnamese mission board. They send, uh, they had a mission for about 10 countries, focus on the Vietnamese people. Okay, and then how about our church? Of course, our church, we support the Vietnamese in Southeast Asia, include South uh, Korean, Taiwan, Vietnam, Cambodia, and all the countries around that area where the community uh, get together. Okay, and we praise the Lord. We, uh, for the last five years, we opened church in uh, Bien Ho, uh, I forgot the English name, okay? And we opened church in Simrit. And during the, during the COVID-19, believe it or not, uh, we open the church in uh, we call it Vietnam Hội Thánh Baptist Đức Tin Faith uh, Baptist Faith Baptist Vietnamese Baptist Church in Nam Pen. 
And uh, recently, we baptized about 30 or 40 something people. And when it worked and ran for about a couple of weeks, and then Cambodia had COVID, so they shut down, and then we just reopened it. We were going to reopen the church and the school in Cambodia uh, in June. So just uh, ran a new place, it, a larger place, uh, so, so we can have the school over there. And, and we also have, uh, uh, when the um, mission team uh, do the evangelism in Vietnam, we be able to uh, witness, and about 30 to 32 people come to Christ in North Vietnam, uh, because that area is still under uh, uh, persecution. So I cannot tell you the name, but there's no church there, no mission, no pastor. And uh, every Saturday morning, it's been at night over there, we have Bible study, and uh, that group is really grow. And uh, we have another group in Saigon, very, very faithful. Every Wednesday morning, we had a Bible study, train the people over there. So that's how God do the work. But recently, Annie, are you here? Okay, Annie, here is. Recently, uh, what, two weeks ago, we ordained Pastor Eugene Tano, Annie's father. Okay, and the church responsible for South Africa, West Africa, they are from Ivory Coastal. So God work will be spread in Houston area for a French speaking community, okay, for at least seven nations. And you had never know, we try to develop the mission to West Africa in the near future. And uh, Pastor Eugene Tano, uh, um, ordained a couple of weeks ago, probably will lead these projects. Uh, so, you pray about it. Maybe if there's a no COVID spread or whatever, you know, if the time is right, maybe in 2022, mark your calendar, or 2023, we will go to West Africa and Southeast Asia. Okay? So pray about it. His father didn't know yet, <laughs> but I'm just making an announcement. <laughs> so, so that the global focus mission, whatever God provide the opportunity, uh, wherever God do the work, we have like follow Him. Okay. So you you would understand God love on the people. God love the Jews. Okay, but God also love on the people. So that reason why he said, preach his name to all nations, begin in Jerusalem. But even in the city of Houston, there is over 100 languages in Houston alone. And we kept fortunate to be able to gather the people for English, Vietnamese, French, maybe future Spanish. And we go out week one and week three to the market to share the gospel in Chinese, Spanish, English, Vietnamese, and uh, some people learn French right now. And so even locally, we still have to have global focus on mission. So Jesus he explained the mission of the church to proclaim the repentance for forgiveness in his name and must be global mission to all the nation so he intentionally communicate to his disciples, make sure you begin in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and on over the world. So yes, you take care of the world, but make sure you don't forget your local community. And Houston is a great city. A lot of languages and a lot of people under hardship right now. And if you, like me, you know, when I'm talk with the local people, the community leader, the police, the fire department, and some of the uh, charity we support, a lot of pain, a lot of people, hardship people, a lot of broken family out there. And it is, sometimes it's really, really sad, especially if 
the the family broken, uh, you know, the Vietnamese family, because if you go back to the tradition of Vietnamese, the family, the bond were very strong, but somehow for the last 15 years, this bond is broken. And the future generation will have to pay the price, grow up in the broken family. And that's really, really sad. And God using the church, us, each one of us, to share the message to ease that pain. And hopefully we can save, or hopefully we can help the next generation. So the mission of the church is spiritual empowerment mission. You, you need to understand, uh, sometimes we see the issue, we see the thing we want to do, but we, we feel very, very limited. We don't have ability, we don't have the strength uh, to, to, to take care. So, so that reason I say it had to be the spirit, spirit and power mission. So the task Jesus gave to those first disciples was huge, it's daunting when you read about it, but they may have to wonder how in the world they can accomplish all of this. And the same thing when I communicate with you this morning, that I had to be Christ focused, had to be global, and so, whoa, how do we do it? And sometimes we get depressed to think about it, and then we can't give up. That's the reason why we need the spiritual empowerment mission. So Jesus remind his disciple for us, the Father had promised to send the helper, the Holy Spirit, who would make impossible tasks possible. If you go back, you read in the book of John, chapter 14. So he talked about, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you, to be with you forever. And the Spirit is the truth, so we can have him. We can speak the truth in love, and that message can be spread or communicate with each other. Some of you, when you were young, and young, talking about only 10 or 15 years ago, when you still elementary school, and some of you come to me and say, man, look at the future. I had to graduate high school, okay? It looked like to get out of high school like forever. And then some of you, oh my goodness, now I had to get out of college. Which life take forever. And then some of you say, now I get, get out of college and now I have to get into professional school. So some of you go to nursing school, professional nursing school, some of you to PA, some of you PT, uh, whatever the word. Some go to dental school, or even some go to medical school away from home. And look like it takes forever. And some of you take, what, 19 years? You know, after high school, and then some of you, like, take another 15 years to complete your education. It looks like forever. It's daunting. It's so difficult. When people around can go to work and make money, and here, you poor, you eat noodle, and then you study. This year, for the high school class, I, we decide not to give the noodle box. <laughs> We break tradition at this time because I went to each market and they run out of uh, noodle. Yeah, remember the tradition when you finish high school, each one of you had a box of noodle. So you not get a box of noodle today on the high school graduate. But next week, uh, you will have the follow up uh, uh, noodle to remind you about that. And you know, sometimes you have to study late, and uh, that's the only food you have, okay, for next week. I couldn't find any one uh, last night. So he talking about, he promised the helper, and promised the helper to help you make the impossible task become possible. And the Holy Spirit will be with disciples. They would not be alone. Yes, sometime. The work of the Lord is sometimes very, very lonely, and we have to pray a lot and rely on the Holy Spirit. Some of you will go to, uh, I heard we'll be in professional school by Tuesday. Uh, the house is already ready, 
on our back, you get ready to face a challenge. Some of you, uh, yeah, but uh, you would understand when a lot of late at night and then you're alone and you're away from home, you study and, uh, and uh, that's the challenge. Uh, also, the Holy Spirit will teach them on things and remind them on Jesus and told them. So hopefully, uh, the Holy Spirit will help you with that. And the Holy Spirit will convict the world of the sin of unbelief in John 16 8. So what exactly I try to communicate to you, the mission really, is the mission of the church, is Christ's center mission. Okay? Global focus mission, spirit and power mission. Some of you, you are already out of the world, you work. Keep this mission in mind. But some of you, you're still in school. Some of you, by next Tuesday, you get in professional school. And so how do you apply this lesson or this sermon? So I cannot say the mission of the church. So you have to say the mission of me or school. Okay, starting next week, professional school had to be Christ sent a mission. I'm not going to work, all I have to do is just study. So I do on the glory to Christ. So do the best you can. And when you make offer to God, what can you offer to God when you are a student? What is it? Anybody? You're not working. You go to school. You study very hard. What exactly can you offer to God? I would recommend your Christ. Okay? So every Sunday, you come to the Lord, you come to the church, and say, Lord, I'm a student. I don't have any money. I cannot offer you my money, but I'm offering you with my study. Okay? Do the best you can and offer him your Christ, whatever it is. Global focus. Remember, on your student, you're still in school. You also need to pay attention to your friend around you. You're not alone. And sometimes build up the network, communicate, help each other out. You will find out some of you, you eventually go to professional school, or uh, even in college, some of you. Professional school, you would find out you need to create a network. Some of you understand what I'm talking about. Create a network. Each help each other out. And that friend will be through your professional life. And mission of the church, and you as a student, you know the church, had to be the spirit and power mission. You had to pray a lot because sometimes you have to rely on God, the source of strength. Okay? Your parents not around anymore. Your friend, the time of need, they're not there. You just rely on God, the Holy Spirit, to give you that strength. Okay? That strength, the last movement. It's just like you run the race. The last movement, you get there. You, when you're done with a professional school, it's not over yet. You have to take the license. Some of you... Probably in about one or two weeks, we get the nursing license. They call me and ask me to pray. For us. Okay, the race is not complete until the professional school and get the uh, professional license. Because some of our young people, they get a job, but pending by August, they have to have professional license. So that's how you apply mission ready. Okay, for the church, Christ sent a mission, spread the word around the world, global focus, look up on the people or nation, and rely on the Holy Spirit. And for you student, your mission had to be christ center mission. Everything you do, you do for the glory of God. Your global focus, it means you have to look around you, make friends with all the people, regardless of their race, regardless of where the nation they come from, and you rely on the Holy Spirit to give you that strength to complete whatever you've done in school. Let us stand up so we can pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you very much. 
because your word not only apply for the church, the mission of the church, but also apply for our daily life, for the student, for business, for whatever uh, we do and you set in front of us. So I pray the Holy Spirit will use on the people in this room to glorify you and use the church to accomplish the mission you prepare in front of the church according to the scripture. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit we be with all God's children in this room. When we get out of this building, we be the salt and the light of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.